I'm scared. Wow, I do not have the patience for this. We get to finally blend this out. Hey guys, it's me, Sylvia, back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out some viral TikTok makeup hacks, or more like makeup like techniques, I should say. It's like the trust the process type of makeup where they look hella crazy and you're like, you're using a lipstick all over your whole face. How is that working for you? But then they end up looking beautiful. So like, I wanna try these crazy techniques and see if it does turn out as good as it looks. Today's video is also in partnership with BoxyCharm. I'm an ambassador for them. So every month or so we get to unbox our boxes together. So we have the May box right here. We'll go through it, see what we got. By the way, we've definitely got a little series going on of me like testing TikTok stuff. Like we just did TikTok fashion hacks. We did beauty hacks before that. Now we're doing makeup hacks. So if you're enjoying these type of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel so then you don't miss future ones. Without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll start by opening up our BoxyCharm box. If you don't know what BoxyCharm is? Like you probably do, but I'll give you the little spiel. It's a beauty subscription service. So every single month you get a little surprise box at your door. If you love beauty products, it's like amazing because the value of what you're getting is always worth way more than what you're paying. This is the base box. They have a different variety of boxes to choose from depending on how much you wanna spend. So you choose which one you want, but this one is $25 a month. You get five full size products in there with an average value of $175. If you want a little bit more products and you wanna spend a little bit more, they also have the premium box and the luxe box. We open her up and we've got our products in there. First product is from First Aid Beauty, the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. It smells like coconuts. I love First Aid Beauty, especially if you have sensitive skin. Their products are so gentle and so, so good. And this just gives you that glow. Next is Ciate London's Bamboo Bronzer. So what's interesting about this is it says it has an oil controlling formulation. It gives you that sun-kissed glow with a shine-free finish. So if you have oily skin type, you'll probably love this for the summer. There's the Bella Pierre Mini Kabuki brush. It's so, so soft. It's actually their best selling brush and it says it won't shut on you during makeup application. Is that true? You see anything? No? passes. Next we have Cab Cosmetics Eyeshadow Palette. 16 shadows, mattes and shimmers. I did really like the formula of these. I tried everything in this box on my TikTok. So go to my TikTok if you wanna see my makeup look that I did with everything, my little one minute review. Next is the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand. Before this month's box, I hadn't tried this product before and now I am obsessed with it. It's a liquid highlighter, but the formula is so silky and blends super easily. It's really lightweight. So if you have like a really mattifying foundation and you wanna make it more dewy, wear this underneath and it'll give you like the most gorgeous glow. You might also get the Murad Environmental Shield Overnight Detox Moisturizer in this month's box. Use it at nighttime to detoxify and revitalize skin overnight. And that's everything in the base box this month. If you've been thinking about joining BoxyCharm, do it this month because they have their Boxy pop-up sale. So starting May 17th, you can shop the sale and get up to like 80% off of your favorite items. Link will be in the description to check that out. Let's start the first hack. This is the first TikTok hack that we're gonna try out. It's basically her applying her base makeup and a bunch of little squares all over her face and then she blends it all out and she's contoured and foundationed to perfection. Foundationed to perfection, that's not even a thing, but you get what I'm saying. I can see how this would work, but also like, why, you know? This is gonna take me so long. Where do we even start? Like she starts with this grid on her face. This is the lightest concealer I have. I'm just gonna use this because I don't wanna use a white eye pencil. I feel like that would not blend out at all. So here we go, I'm gonna try and make the lines. Oh my God, look how crooked it is. This is way harder than it looks. Why are her lines so straight? I do not have a steady hand, I'm realizing. We have to do like 50 more of these lines. It's tickly. My eyebrow is messing my path up. I do not have the patience for this. Verticals are done. Progress, that's so crooked. So many small little squares. The only thing motivating me to finish this is the satisfaction I know I will get from blending it all in. Okay, the grid has been made. This is like the lazy girl version of her grid because obviously my lines are not as perfect as hers, but I look kind of cool. Now time to fill it all in. She has a whole bunch of different colors on her face. We'll start with contour. I don't even think I have a shade dark enough like the one that she's using, but we'll just kind of start with this. I'm gonna put this kind of where I would bronze and contour. Then she does have some skeptical places that she's putting these like around her mouth, on her eyebrow. I don't know why you would do this on your eyebrow. Time to add some blush pink. I'll fill this in in some areas around my cheeks. Maybe I see she has some on her forehead. I don't even know. I just need to, I just need to fill these blocks in at this point. We need some highlights. So I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape Glow One and fill in some of the blocks in the areas that I would want to highlight. This is gonna give us some crazy glow when 
we blend it out. Okay, oh my God. I'm losing steam, people. This is taking so long. Now, I'm gonna use like three or four shades of foundation that if I mix them all together, like I could get my shade, and we're gonna just fill in these blocks. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you think? Nice. Finally done and I look insane. Look at the intricacy. Look at the detail. This is a masterpiece on my face right now. I am so proud. We get to finally blend this out. First, let me spray this with setting spray because it's literally been hours and half of it is dry on my face. We need moisture to help blend this. Oh my God, it's blending. This is so satisfying. It's blending out into the perfect shade. What? Let's see if we get some pink for my cheeks. But can we talk about how beautifully this is blending out right now? Because I'm actually shocked. Why does it look so good? And why is it my perfect shade? My shoulder is actually burning from blending so much. This is a full on shoulder workout. I still don't get the whole brows thing. It just looks crusty. I look like I have so much foundation on. It's finally blended out. It took so long, but was low key so satisfying. Look at my face. I look like I've done the 100 layers of foundation challenge, okay? We're bringing it back 2016 with this. She goes on to then do her full face glam. And I feel like if I were to do that too, it wouldn't look as crazy as I do now. My eyes wouldn't look as weird in my brows and my lips, you know? So then I feel like it could be passable because my skin actually looks really good and it blended out into my shade. So that's more than I was expecting. So, I mean, can it be done? Does it blend out nicely? Yes, it does. Do you look like you have way too much makeup on? Probably. Did it take way too long? Yes, it did. So I probably wouldn't recommend you doing this unless you're extremely bored and just wanna see what it's like. Next, we have this infamous blush technique. I'm sure you've seen this already. I feel like this has been all over social media, but it originated on TikTok and I'm finally gonna try it today. So she takes a red lipstick and just kinda goes ham on her cheeks. And this is more of like a satin finish. I would assume that's better than like a super matte lipstick cause you want it to blend out, right? She puts like a line up here. <laughs> that looks intense. And then a line down her nose. Trust the process. And then she blends it out. I guess the point of this is that that it's gonna give us like a glowing from within kind of flushed look because she looks amazing at the end of it. Let's hope that that's also the case for us. Wow, this is getting better and better. And she really blends this like all over her forehead. I look like I have like windburn from skiing for too long or like a severe sunburn. Now she contours down her nose, her temples. She doesn't go in the hollows of the cheeks. She actually places it higher, which I like. That's how I do my contour now too. You put it too low, like in the hollows of your cheeks. I feel like it can like drag your face down more than lift it up. And then she has an interesting chin contour. I've never contoured my chin like this. I guess it's gonna make it look more round and like protruding, which is apparently the move. I've seen girls get filler in their chin to like have it more out. And I'm like, should I do that? Like, are you supposed to have a protruding chin? Is my chin good? I don't know. <laughs> we'll just try it with contour today. And then she highlights slash like conceals. She only places it here. And here, again, the makeup facelift technique. It puts quite a bit on her chin. We'll blend all that out. Her chin is looking real crazy. I feel like the red just makes the contour look too light. It doesn't even look like I'm contouring anything. Blend it out to perfection. Then she goes in with her foundation and she applies it with a brush. I feel like it just looks more satisfying. Little situation here, satisfying swipe here and blend. I'm just using my typical Born This Way foundation. It's a medium to full coverage, so it should cover up most of this redness we have going on here, but not completely, which I think is the point of this technique. Otherwise, why else would you spend all that time putting the lipstick under there if you're gonna just cover it all up? I'm kind of digging how my chin is looking. Does it look a little bit more like out? My hairline right now, it's, it's staying red. So if I were to do this again, maybe stay far away from your hairline. I feel like it doesn't look that bad like on camera right now, but in person, you guys, I look like I just did like a six hour workout. I'm a tomato. It's very red in person, but it could be a vibe like for photos. I don't know. No, can you see how red this is? Now imagine it like 10 times more red in person. It's not that cute. Let me turn the lighting way down. You see what I mean? It has a very, very strong red undertone here and it's definitely stuck in my hairline. I'm curious to see how it looks with flash photography. So let me take a photo. The flash photo actually looks pretty good. I'm shocked. So I feel like if you were to do this technique, I would only do the tiniest bit of lipstick on my cheeks and then blend that out just around this area and then put the foundation on top. Cause I feel like that 
would look cute. That would look normal. Everything else was just doing too much. I would not go out in public like this. So could make this technique work, but I would probably just apply my blush the regular way. It just saves time. Next we have this technique, applying your lipstick in a way that'll make them look more full. So basically you purse your lips inwards and then you line your lips with your lipstick. And afterwards we're supposed to have big juicy lips. It just doesn't feel comfortable. <laughs> You're like horse to overline. Okay, the experience itself is kind of uncomfortable, but I see why it could be a thing. I feel like it forces you to overline just over top of where your natural lip line is doing that. I feel like it definitely gives you a more messy application, like especially my, my bottom lip here. Look how crooked that is. Now we'll fill it in. I think I did go way overboard with it and like my lips are a little bit more overlined than I would do even with a lip liner. But if you don't use lip liner, this hack I think is worth trying and seeing if it works for you. It's definitely a preference thing. In this next hack, she applies her false sees like on her actual wing to give more of a fox eye effect. So let's give it a go. I love the fox eye trend. I got too ahead of myself and did the whole wing, not realizing that in the TikTok, she kind of does an outline. So this time we just make the outline of the wing. We're back on track. Now we'll take our lashes and we apply it just along our bat wing. Oh my God. I also would normally put mascara on before doing this and curl my lashes, but it doesn't look like she did those steps. So it's glued on, but I think I glued it facing down. So now the whole lash is like, Wait. <laughs> so sad. This feels so wrong and just, I don't know what, I don't know. And then she just fills in the wing. I feel like I might have made my wing just way too big and dramatic. Like this looks so obvious that my lash is way up here. You see that? I feel like it definitely does give you that illusion of like an extreme fox eye and you could get away with it only in photos and video. In person, you can tell the gap between the lash and your natural lashes. It's very, very noticeable. But if you're doing it for an Instagram picture, by all means, I would go for it because it just makes it that much more dramatic but yeah you can definitely see where the lash is it looks kind of crazy i definitely don't see myself using this technique this next hack she shows us how she fixes her receding hairline using makeup first she creates a line i'm assuming using like a brow pen which is what i'm using just following my hairline i have like a little bit of a widow's peak okay who doesn't let's fill that baby in i feel like this is gonna give us the helmet look i'm scared we'll trust the process it's fine she then takes what looks like a contouring stick and applies that to fill in i don't have a dark enough shade to match my roots. So I'm just gonna go in with a really dark brown eyeshadow, which normally this is the only step that I do to fill in my roots. Now it looks like she takes a foundation powder. I'm not sure what the purpose of this would be, I guess to set it, cause she did use cream, but we're just gonna do it. I don't know what it's doing. Taking my foundation powder, Okay, that just left like a weird white cast. I'm not into that. And then she goes back in with that like brow pen or maybe it's an eyeliner pen, I don't know. And she creates little fake hairs. It's kind of difficult to create these little hairs on top of my real hair. And the product isn't really coming out like it should. We look a little bald here. A little bald here. And then she just shows a far away shot and it looks amazing. If I go really far, do you think this would look okay? I don't think so. I don't think mine looks as good. This line is just looking crazy, looking like a helmet right now. So let me try and blend that. No, my hair. Okay, that's as good as I can blend it. I still feel like what's making it look like a helmet is that initial line that we put all the way across. I would skip that and I would skip the foundation powder and I think the rest of it would give you a good filled in looking hairline. Everything else we did I feel like is just pretty extra. So those are all the new viral makeup techniques that we'll be trying out today. If you want a part two, let me know because I have a lot more saved. We just couldn't fit it all in this video. Don't forget to check out BoxyCharm. Link is in the description to get your own curated beauty boxes. Watch one of these videos if you haven't seen it yet. Get the Sylvia Ganny Marathon going. Bye guys. Bye.